Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. The Online Jewelry Academy has been invited by Durston Tools to try out and review some of their products. In this video, we'll be looking at the Mini C100E rolling mill with side extensions. When I first learned how to make jewelry, my instructor never taught myself or any of my classmates how to use the rolling mill. I think he was afraid that one of us was going to run something really crazy through his rolling mill. True story, I once had a student who came to class with a freeze-dried hummingbird that she intended to roll print. Oh no! Anyway, I digress. If you're on the fence about whether or not you should buy a rolling mill, allow me to give you a big push. The rolling mill is one of the most important tools in any jeweler's workshop. With a rolling mill, you can quickly reduce the thickness of sheet metal and form wires without sanding or filing. And that's what keeps money in your pocket, so it literally pays for itself. One of the best things about the Durston Minning Rolling Mill is that they're great for someone making jewelry at home or in a small studio. They're small and weigh almost half of a standard mill. This makes them far more portable but you'll still need to secure them to something immobile as it takes a lot of force to use any rolling mill. There are some other great things that you can do with a rolling mill. For example, you can print sheet metal with negative and even positive images. Rolling mills are great for flattening sheet metal. It can even transform uneven surfaces made through etching processes to create bicolor sheet metal. And you can use it to roll out alloyed metal ingots or bullion coins to make sheet metal. Now, it doesn't happen in just one pass through the mill. You'll need to finesse your metals to get the best results. As the world's foremost manufacturer of rolling mills, Durston Tools products are recognized globally for their reliability, incredibly robust construction, and build quality. With a milling width of 100 millimeters, its one-piece cast iron construction is designed and manufactured for maximum strength and rigidity. Its maintenance-free bearings and direct drive means a lifetime of consistent rolling. This mini powerhouse can handle a maximum sheet thickness of 5 millimeters and a maximum wire thickness of 6.5 millimeters. This compact rolling mill offers nine square wire grooves that consistently roll your wires from 6.5 millimeters to as small as one millimeter. It also features four half round extension rollers to increase the versatility of your mill and has a large, comfortable, easy to read calibrated dial and a wheel on the top for ease of use. If you're at a point in your jewelry making where you're considering owning a rolling mill, keep watching and I'll show you how it works. First, you adjust the rollers using the wheel on top. You can turn it from right to left to either open or close the rollers. The handle is cranked to roll material through the machine. You want to start with the handle in an up position because it's easier to start pushing rather than trying to pull it up. It's going to take practice working with the rolling mill to learn how to operate it exactly the way you want it to work. There is a calibrated dial on top, just below the top wheel, that will help you to note the position of the rollers. Keep track of how you adjust the rollers based on the calibrated dial, and that should help you to learn how to get the adjustment that you need to perform the tasks that you want to accomplish. Now, don't ever run anything that's wet through the rollers. That means no wet grass, no green leaves, nothing that could actually put moisture on the rollers and promote corrosion. When you're finished working with your rolling mill for the day, you need to place a cover over the whole machine. And the manufacturer recommends that you oil the rollers at least every day. It's critical that you never run anything as hard or harder than the rollers through the rollers. It'll ruin the machine. So if you need to run steel or something hard like garnet sandpaper through the rolling mill, you need to protect the rollers by cushioning the harder material between layers of something softer like brass or copper. The primary function of any rolling mill is to reduce the thickness of sheet metal. For this example, I'm using a piece of 20 gauge copper sheet. The first step is to turn the wheel on top to open the rollers until the piece of metal easily slides between them. Next, I'll use the wheel on top to tighten the rollers just to the point where you can't pull the metal out with your fingers. 
Remember, the metal is well annealed, so tightening the rollers too much could leave an unwanted impression. Note the number on the calibrated dial in the front on the arrow nearest you. Then, loosen the rollers with the top wheel and remove your sheet metal. Now you can turn the top wheel back to the position that you previously noted. Then turn the top wheel a bit more to slightly decrease the space between the rollers. This will leave enough of a gap to crank the copper sheet material through the rollers to decrease the overall thickness. Without making any adjustments, flip the sheet metal over and crank it through the rolling mill again. This should help to maintain the flatness of the material. Check the thickness of your sheet using a gauge wheel and continue the process, re-annealing whenever necessary until you achieve the thickness you desire. Rolling square and half round wires with the Durston Minning Rolling Mill is easy. To create square wire, insert a well annealed round wire into one of the nine square groove options. Depending on the gauge of the wire, you may need to start with the rollers partially open and progressively tighten them. The rollers should be nearly closed for the last pass before moving to the next groove. While pulling slightly on the end of the wire, crank the wire through the rolling mill, keeping a tension on the wire. This will help to keep it straight. Give the wire a 90 degree turn and roll it through again the same way. You'll need to run your wire through each groove two or three times to produce a well-formed result. Be sure to re-anneal your wire whenever necessary, making sure to pickle, brass brush, rinse, and dry your wire before returning to the rolling mill. Half round wires are created in much the same way using the side extension. The only difference is you don't need to give the wire a 90 degree turn with each pass through the rolling mill. I highly recommend the C100E rolling mill. It's lightweight, versatile, easy to maneuver, and works great in my small home studio. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember, if you purchase this or any Durston tool using this link, durston.com forward slash OJA, you'll be helping to support the production of future OJA videos. And we have a link in the description below. Remember, the Online Jewelry Academy has over 300 free videos on its website at onlinejewelryacademy.com and we have three paid courses on udemy.com. There's colorful silver jewelry that provides a complete set of instructions for beginners, our hinge jewelry course shows how to create a well-articulated bracelet, and our stone setting course provides instruction for five different types of stone setting. You can find links to discount codes in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.